So it's first and ten now for the Steelers as they go deep in Seattle territory. Trubisky again, this time more time, rolling to his left. He can do that, fires into the end zone. Touchdown! The gunner is in. Gunner Oshesky with a touchdown. He's been impressive in camp. He continues tonight, and Mitch Trubisky takes him right down. Team, this is not ideal for an offensive coordinator or a quarterback for that matter. Here comes the pressure. Mason Rudolph going to go in the end zone looking for George Pickens, and he makes the catch. Does he keep his feet in? Yes, he does. It's a touchdown. George Pickens. Mason offense with alacrity. Rolling right again. Pressure throwing. Warren. Does he get in, or is he stopped short? It's a touchdown, the first of the Kenny Pickett era. They signal touchdown for the stretch by Jalen Warren. Four left, third quarter. Steelers trying to make it an eight-point game. Pickett fires and has his man in the end zone. That's Connor Hayward, and that is two more points added to the total. All right, so Drew Locke with an opportunity here to unlock this tie with a minute 17 left after the fourth down play fails. Here comes Mark Robinson, and that's a... Blindside fumble. DeMarvin Leal, I believe, got his hands on it. Brian Flores is happy. He likes those linebackers. Mark Robinson, we talked about him, and he made the play right there. Not that Second easy. down. Pickett slings it down the field. A good out pattern, and it goes to Vaughns. Vaughns is going to dive into the end zone. Tyler Vaughns from Kenny Pickett. <laughs> The fans, man, they were really into it, and, and we appreciate their presence, uh, created the type of atmosphere that we desire here at Akashore, and so um, that was good to get back in front of them. Um, a lot of good efforts, some things to learn from, some positive things, some negative things. Um, that's probably the nature of the first week out. It's good to learn those lessons and explore those things with the win. Um, I don't care what time of year it is, we play and play to win. And there you have it. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, you uh, came along to watch the game yesterday. For all of you guys uh, got to see it, ladies and gentlemen, we're uh, watching on NFL Network or streaming live with NFL Game Pass. Just a friendly reminder, if you guys are watching on NFL Network and there's an R game being uh, played, usually like around like a little bit into the second half, like we saw last night, they'll switch games. Fortunately for me, I got Game Pass for right now. I was able to see most of the game. Uh, and uh, watched it, and the Steelers pick up their uh, preseason with a bang in a way, 32-25, uh, pretty solid offensive uh, moving, especially in the run blocking with the offensive line. That seemed to be the theme of the night here last night. Of course, a lot of stars is expected, uh, not going to be playing out there. Preseason right there for health reasons, uh, no doubt about it, but definitely all eyeballs were on the quarterback shuffle last night, as we saw it, uh, began with Mitch Trubisky, who uh, did very well, uh, kicked things off, followed by Mason Rudolph to finish out the rest of the first half. He came in with around like uh, a little over three minutes ago in the first quarter, finished out the half, and then it was all Kenny Pickett in the second half, uh, getting uh, his, uh, himself tuned up right now. And uh, his uh, NFL career has just begun, especially his rookie season. Once again, I am Charles Brown Richie. Uh, you guys can follow me on social media, on Twitter, at MetasteelCGR, and on Instagram, at Metasteel Nation right here. Like I said, it is victory weekend right here. Uh, Steelers' uh, next game coming up in the preseason will be on the road in Jacksonville, which will be a 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, kickoff at TIAA uh, Banks Field. Uh, that'll be on Saturday, August uh, 20th. And then they'll wrap up the foul uh, preseason game. Remember, it's three games this year. Remember, they had to play a fourth game last year due to technicality since they were playing the Hall of Fame game versus Dallas Cowboys, which is supposed to be taking place the year before, pretty much two years ago. So, unfortunately, they had to play four games the the Hall of Fame game plus the regular uh, three games the NFL has currently got set up uh, right now. Uh, so that will get, once again be in Jacksonville versus Jaguars, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern kickoff on Saturday, August 20th. And then the cool, cool, cool way then the preseason will be on Sunday, Sunday, August 28th at uh, Acrisure Stadium as uh, they'll wrap things up. Uh, with the Detroit Lions.
Uh, just want to get your thoughts real quick uh, right now. Like, what'd you guys uh, think of last night's uh, game? I mean, the the competition, more potentially uh, with the quarterback battle. I put up a poll on Twitter late last night, and uh, yes, uh, no one held uh, me held uh, Charles Price reaching hostage. This is me with the glasses debuting uh, tonight. I've been wearing it before, just in case anyone was noticing. Just usually wear it from driving a distance. I figured just why not wear them in the podcast a little bit. Uh, but anyway, I did bring a poll last night, uh, just asking everybody. And so far, we still got votes uh, uh, coming in, four hours left. And I pulled out there after watching the opener, which quarterback looked the best. Uh, so far, it is Kenny Pickett right now narrowly edging out uh, Mitch Trubisky at about a little over 49%. 46% voted in uh, second of all to Mitch Trubisky. And Mason Rudolph, about a little over four and a half uh, percent. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, this race Rudolph, I thought, looked pretty sharp. Unfortunately, I think that botched fumble right there, or that uh, strip fumble that he was blindsided by, and where he got dropped for a loss of eight yards on the sack, I think a lot of people were looking at it that really just stood out in his mind and a lot of people's minds right there. I mean, you look at the quarterback play in general. I mean, Mike Tomlin uh, really had some uh, nice things to say about it. Uh, and speaking of which, uh, here's his thoughts as far as, like, you know, like not only Kenny Pickett, but all three guys uh, performing as well as we looked at it uh, from last night's uh, game as uh, we took a look. But uh, anyway, as we're, we're checking things out right now, uh, Steelers, like I said, I mean, definitely got ways to go right now as uh, we uh, look at it. I mean, Mike Tomlin, uh, of course, very pleased, like you said, uh, because of free, no matter how you slice it. I mean, these uh, circumstances. But uh, anyway, stepped up and so did. I mean, what you really look at, I mean, it was a really good uh, football game. Matt Cale really looked uh, sharp. Trying to get the sound bite real quick here. Uh, Mike Tomlin here. Stop. Stop. On the, the quarterback uh, play from last night, as uh, we looked at things here, and uh, definitely a uh, very pleased man. Definitely got some room for improvement, of course, but he definitely uh, felt like you know, like all three were uh, capable. And sorry for the delay. Here we go. Here's Mike Tomlin on the quarterback play from last night. Hey, hey the you blink, I cut your eyelids off. Don't you hey, don't blink? I got you. Let's go and then open it up for questions. You know, um, he, he, he moved his group. Um, he played situational football. He, had a, he displayed a competitive spirit. Um, a lot of good things to build on for, from a first performance standpoint. What about the first two quarterbacks? I thought I could say the same thing about all three, to be honest with you. Um, they moved their units. They did the informal things associated with the position from a leadership and communication standpoint. Um, they were engaged. It was a good first time out uh, for all three. Obviously, we'll comb through it tomorrow and, 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 and evaluate it in that way. Move their <laughs> unit right there. Move the group, uh, what he just said a moment ago. I thought that was very interesting. I liked how he praised them from both like a, a leadership standpoint, too. I mean, all three of these guys, especially, but I think more in particular, I mean, when you really break it down, I think Mitch Trubisky and Kenny Pickett more in particular, don't get me wrong, I think uh, Mason Ruff, who had the second best uh, completion percentage of the three, uh, he ended up with the day going nine for 15, uh, 93 yards, and about almost like a little over a quarter right there. He came in about a little over three minutes left to go in the first quarter, finished out the first half, uh, he went two for three on the uh, on drives where he scored, and where he uh, had one passing touchdown, which of course was George Pickens on uh, the one corner in the end zone where he pretty much caught him in the corner. It was a nice little toe tap in a way, and then he also had a field goal right there, and uh, his team had to punt one time uh, on there. So he was two for three, zero for one in the red zone. Uh, finishing off for the night for 93 yards. I thought Mitch Trubisky starting off the game. This is the guy right here who a lot of people raised eyebrows at, including myself. 
all off season. And I was not really receptive to the fact of having him on here uh, as a quarterback. I mean, being the heir apparent to Bev Osberger, I got to tell you, the opening drive right there, yes, it's preseason. But as Dale Lally pointed out, there was still a few guys on that CL Seahawks uh, defense where they played at least probably like four, maybe five veterans uh, in the secondary in that game. And, of course, you saw on the Seattle Seahawks on the other side, flipping to the quarterbacks, saw Drew Locke and Geno Smith right there. Uh, Geno Smith, who's definitely been around the block uh, for a while here, who's definitely been a juryman uh, quarterback. Of course, uh, Geno Smith, who came in the league since 2013, beginning with his days with the New York uh, Jets. Remember, he came in uh, last season for a few games. Uh, for Russell Wilson, where he started uh, four games right there, went one and two as a starter last year. And in and all, that season, he threw for 702 yards, five touchdowns, one interception right there. Uh, speaking of last night at the CLC Seahawks, you had uh, both these guys right here. Uh, Drew Locke, who had two touchdowns and no interceptions. Steele Smith did not throw any touchdowns at all in this game. Uh, Drew Locke, Definitely, of course, had the better pass rating in that game, 131.1, as opposed to Geno's 85.7. Uh, CLC Hawks. I mean, I think they did a good job. I mean, just as good at running the ball, but the Steelers, on the other hand, I mean, think about this too. We talked about the offensive line. We saw them moving some people, moving people around, this particular with uh, Moore right there, and other people, and George Pickens getting in on the action too. George Pickens, who I thought made a nice block in that game right there, uh, in that uh, game right there, where it was a third and one, and it turned out for a nice 24-yard uh, game from the Steelers' own 19-yard uh, uh, line. This is by Anthony McFarland. George Pickens made a nice little block where he was able to get some extra yards right there, burst for 24 yards right there. Uh, George Pickens looks like he's going to be a fun guy. A lot of people have been keeping a lot of praise towards this guy, arguably being one of the best receivers in this draft. And you can kind of see a little bit of that on display last night. And, of course, Daryl Oseski right here, too. He's another guy who's been like a, a dark horse in this offense, too, as we look at this uh, going this roster right now that has been constructed, starting off by Kevin Colbert before it transitioned over to Omar Khan right here. I mean, you look at this guy right here. He caught three out of his four targets right there, uh, led the receiving group with 47 yards uh, receptions, and he also had a touchdown grab in there. Uh, George Pickens, on the other hand, uh, three, or, three for five right there. Uh, he caught off his targets uh, for 43 yards of a touchdown. His longest was for 26 yards. And also Tyler Bonds right there, too. Uh, Tyler Bonds, who also had the game-winning uh, touchdown pass, from uh, K. Pickett for 24 yards right there. I mean, a lot of good stuff to say, oh, wow, I think for the first fight right there. I mean, and then to see how Matt Canna is going to get this thing on the tracks right here going forward right now. I I mean, still a lot of unknown right here. I mean, he's still got a ways to go for the open up the regular season on the road in Cincinnati uh, versus the Bengals right here. Uh, which would be on Sunday, September 11th, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern kickoff at Paul Brown Stadium right there. And uh, that's going to be a, definitely an interesting uh, hyped-up uh, match. As you can imagine right there, Steelers looking to uh, avoid a uh, bitter three-game losing streak uh, by the hands of the Bengals. Uh, staying back to Monday Night Football 2020, where Steelers started the spiral right there. We'll continue to see how much of it really was truly Big Ben Roethlisberger being in the way right here as far as like what Matt Canada has been able to do. The times for last night's great game, uh, pretty uh, nice uh, showing for the debut of Acrosure Stadium, the newly named, uh, no longer Heinz Field, but of course, a lot of Steeler fans, my forever Heinz, and myself included right here, 48,197 in the tennis, according to the Steelers, uh, PR Burt Lawton right there. And uh, let's get into like some of these uh, plays real quick, though, too. I mean, like even like with uh, Mitch Trubisky, who started off like in the game, too, which I was very impressed by. 
I mean, you look at his opening uh, snap right there. He has short left to uh, George Pickens for nine yards from the Pittsburgh 19. And then also, too, following the nice 24-yard uh, run uh, by Anthony McFarlane after, like, three plays after that, uh, he was able to uh, get a nice uh, pass guard Oshesky right there for to the Seattle 13 for 25 yards right there. And his first touchdown pass was to Gunner uh, from Mitch Trubisky for 13 yards. Uh, Nick Seba, Schema, excuse me, I had the extra point, uh, which was good for that one. It was a uh, sub nothing at that point. And uh, later on, too. And of course, uh, Mason Rudolph right there. Uh, like I said, the opening snap. But anyway, finishing up with uh, Mitch Trubisky right there. I mean, uh, basically, I mean, you could definitely see he was a lot more uh, warmed up. He was a lot more ready. And just how he was able, his comfort level, to move around in the pocket, too. Now, of course, Brett Rosberger was on his last legs. Uh, wheels were uh, chipping right there. And he wasn't able to do much. And it's becoming more a liability standpoint for the team as far as trying to make plays in or out of the pocket right there. And that definitely really uh, hurt their run game as a whole, too, significantly trying to move the ball downfield as he got older. I mean, ever ever since, like, the throwing double, I mean, basically. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, Mason Rudolph, I thought he he looked okay right there. I mean, he had 93 yards. Uh, finished off the night right there, by the way, too, with a 100.1 QB rating. Um, Kay Pickett led the night with a QB rating of 132.6. Second was Mitch Trubisky with 126.8. That makes it off. And like I said, when I started this poll uh, last night at about a little after 9 Central time, there's quite a few people who started off uh, right away out the gate with Mitch Trubisky right there uh, as a significant uh, vote. Uh, Kerry Pickett is starting to gain some traction right here as he uh, came in uh, first in the voting right now. Uh, if you guys want to feel free to check it out, uh, go check me out on Twitter. Like I said, at MassFieldCDR, the poll is still running. We got a little uh, less than four hours remaining, so feel free. I'd like to see your votes right now. We got 65 votes in uh, since last night, uh, which I thought was really uh, pretty impressive right there. Look at everything else uh, going on uh, throughout that game. And uh, what way to debut the stadium with a win? Let's hit, make a count for the regular season. Um, and let's go, let's go right into it. Kenny Pickett, the man of the night right there, too, for the, the quarterback, in my opinion, right there. I, I'd probably say Mitch Trubisky first, then Kenny Pickett. But Kenny Pickett, I think, you know what? No, you know what? Let me take that back. I think Kenny Pickett was the star of the quarterback that night right there. First uh, touchdown pass and his uh, rookie career, even though it doesn't count, just preseason touchdown pass, but touchdown pass nonetheless, came from outside the packet. Warren the Brook Pryor of ESPN, who covers the Steelers right there, he threw an FBS best 12 touchdowns went outside the pocket uh, last year. Uh, his first touchdown pass was for three yards, and the game-winning touchdown was to Tyler Bonds for uh, 24 yards uh, to the former Bengal right there. Now, he did struggle a bit after following his opening drive was a 65-yard touchdown drive. The net, as he had the next two drives and with punts, and a turnover on downs. He will be redeemed later uh, on his uh, forward out on a fourth and one. This was late in the game with under a minute and a half, I believe, left to go at Seattle's 45. When uh, shortly after, when Drew Locke uh, had the ball, Mark Robinson, linebacker for the Steelers, he created a forced uh, fumble that was recovered by Tuzar Skipper right there. Uh, Pickett would also have a successful uh, two-point conversion uh, following his first uh, touchdown pass, but to Connor Hayward. But, I mean, still, I mean, that was a nice, uh, beautiful uh, play by Tyre Vaughn, who actually uh, bounced off a defender, in my opinion, or ducked one, was able to run in for the touchdown. 
in uh, last night, he was saying that in regards to the two-point conversion, which is the only two-point conversion that was scored last night, he specifically wanted Connor Hayward out there for the two-point. Uh, he said that he was one of the guys that I rep with a lot, a lot, and I have a lot of trust in him. He's a great playmaker. I made sure that he was out there for that one. Uh, Steelers uh, were had a few people with injuries, more particularly on the receiving group, too, uh, notably. Uh, they were without Kelvin Austin, a uh, foot injury, and then, of course, Anthony Miller with a shoulder, uh, which Mike Tomlin did confirm after the game at the post-press uh, conference. Also, Nobles, too, that were not playing uh, last night's game were also Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool right there. So, again, of course, we know preseason is a lot of uh, bench play, but I got to admit, it was a little pretty exciting and pretty unique from the standpoint just to see how people would just get a little bit settled in. I mean, kind of just, like, uh, get out of their comfort zone, start making these guys hustle and try and uh, play for one another. I thought it was a really uh, great combined effort collectively all around I mean, for this and just to see things open up. Uh, just right now, let's see how they follow up with Jacksonville right there uh, in this preseason. I mean, it was a nice way to start off. We'll see how they follow it up. Let's go and get a uh, wrap up a little bit more right here, too. Jalen Warren, who went out and drafted out of Oklahoma State, uh, led all running backs in scrimmage last night's game. He had 64 yards uh, total with a touchdown reception, 34 yards off of six carries uh, on the ground and four receptions for 30 yards which was, in, I mean, in that game. For the Dale Lally, the Steelers scored 37 points in the first quarter in all of last year's games, with the highest being 17 points versus Denver Broncos right here. So, I mean, it's like Craig Wolfe would like to say, can we see some more of this Canadian bacon right here? I mean, pressure being served up. I mean, Matt Canada, I mean, I mean, according to Dale Lally, he kind of like went from scapegoat to almost genius last night. We'll see how this continues to unfold, I mean, throughout the season. But to be honest, yeah, I still have my birth on Matt Canada for right now. There was a lot of uh, pre-snap uh, motion, uh, which he also did mention, uh, quarterback movement in the pocket. And they also saw the Steelers using more of the field, not just throwing short passes and hoping receivers to break an ankle and turn it into something. For example, on the third and sixth, Mitch Bisky hit Gunnar Olszewski on a 25-yard pass in shotgun formation. Offense line blocked real well, as I mentioned earlier. They moved people around, including a nice block by George Pickens to assist Anthony, McFar Anthony McFarland on a solid 24-yard gain on third and one from their own 19-yard line. Defensively, the Steelers led this game with six tackles for loss as Cornerback Arthur Millette had two. He led both teams in tackles for loss last night and was third on the team with tackles with five total tackles, all, be, all of them being sold right there. Uh, Steelers did not use Chris Boswell or Presley Harvin in this game. They allowed Nick Skiba and Cameron N to handle the kicking and punting duties. All in all, a uh, good start for the preseason. Despite uh, backup safety Carl Joseph, he was on crutches after the game. After leaving early, there were no other major injuries. And the offense had a tough start to practices the opening week of training camp. Move the ball pretty consistently. Uh, so there you have it right there. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts real quick. I'm going to just go ahead and go real quick and get my guys that stood out uh, for last night. I'm going to have to probably go probably like uh, with George Pickens would be the one on offense for right now. I mean, he caught three of his five targets. 43 yards, half touchdown grab. Just like Gunner. He also made it just a key block to set the oh, early. Okay, break there. And then on uh, defense, I probably had to go with uh, the last guy right there who made the uh, force uh, fumble right there uh, to uh, wrap up the game. But anyway, uh, that was uh, it right here. Wrap up for this episode of the podcast. Follow me on social media, I'm Matt Steele and Instagram, Matt Steele Nation. I leave you. Go try your own. Here we go, sirs. Here we go. I got it. Thank you for watching the Matt Steele Podcast with your host, Charles Project Richie, here on YouTube. 
please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And for all the latest Man of Steel podcasts, episodes, feel free to download them on Mixcloud, Anchor.fm, and SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts. Oh,